Hey gal guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So for today's job we have some very large tubes in for some machining and a little bit of welding for one of our local customers. The machining I need to do to these, it is only for a drive plate to be welded into the end of the tube so they can then position these on a welding rotator and attach what plates and bracketry they need to in order to build their machines. So once these components are completed by the customer, they're gonna be the backbone for their laser buckets. A laser bucket is basically a tow behind scraper for a tractor. They're primarily used in farming and final trimming and getting ground extremely level. They're not really designed for massive bulk earth moving like your cat scrapers are. These are more of a refined machine for doing very precise work. They are generally hooked up to a GPS unit so you can take very, very fine cuts. You can also grade with the machine so you don't just have to take flat cut, you can grade it on whatever degree you want to. They are a grader, a dump truck and a scraper all in one. There are many different manufacturers around the world but these ones are a little bit more unique to others out there. Not only are they made here, here in Australia but they have other features that other machines don't have. The pieces of material we're going to be machining today, it is 12 and 3 quarter bananas, I mean inches, in diameter by 11 and a half ID. We thought you might be interested to know these weigh 680 kilo each. The tubes are just over 4 metres in length. Generally we would have done these in our LZMT, but that's a bit of playing around because we've got to take the tailstock off because they're just a little bit too long to fit in that machine. But now that we have the Shanyang up and running, we don't need to do any of that playing around anymore. We can throw it straight in the lathe and get straight to work on it. You also might notice the LZMT is no longer here. So because the Shanyang's up and running now, we've been running it for a couple of months. It hasn't given us any dramas. Everything seems to be going exactly the way I would hoped it to. We haven't needed the LZ, so I did advertise it for sale and we did sell it to a local company. The machine's been moved on. We now have a bit more room here in the shed and they're gonna get the use out of it. Righto guys, so we've got that dialed into within 0.2 of a mil. I'm not gonna play with that anymore. It's not gonna get any better because it is the surface of the tube that has given me the problem. So within 0.2 is gonna well and properly be enough. The customer has stated this could be to within one mil and it would not be an issue for them. So rather than sit here and do unnecessary foredrawing trying to get this dialed in perfectly, especially when I've got jobs lined up out the door, I don't need to waste time here. I'll go down there, get the other end set up and I can start the machining.
Right, so now we've got the steady band cut, everything set up. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to face it. I'm going to put a boring bar in and I'm going to counter bore it as per the drawing to suit the drive plates.
Righto, so that's all the machining done on this tube. So we're going to get this one out, get the other one set up, and we can start on the second one.
Big thanks to Shane and Alyssa for giving us all these treats and toys for homeless and a big box of tooling that Shane has generously given us from his fitting and turning days. Silk one. He's still done. Righto guys, so that's all the machining completed. We're going to take it over to our welding area now, get it set up on the rollers, fit the plates into each end, and then we're going to weld them out. So these are the drive plates I'm going to be welding into the end of the tubes. I have a drive plate for one end and a blanking cap for the other end. The customer manufactures these in-house and then supplies them to us. They do have a direction on which way they go in. There is a recess machined into it for a spigot to locate the plate onto the rotator and then they use X amount of bolts to then hold those two parts together. The recess I machined into the end of the tube is 40mm deep. The plates are 30mm deep. This will be covered over by an end cap so it can't be seen when the customer has completed their fabrications. So the wire we're going to be using is a Hobart product, it's Fabcore 1100, so it makes it a metal core. I like to use the 1.2 wire because it's got a better deposition rate and I'll be able to fill that joint a lot quicker. The gas we're going to be using is an Argo Shield Heavy, so that's 80% argon, 20% CO2. Good combination for what we're doing here, and being metal core it's going to dig pretty well, so good, good penetration there. In case you haven't noticed, I have a new hat. This is from Isaac at Icy Weld. He must have noticed I was bald. <laughs> Thank you, Isaac. I've never actually tried one before. It's good that it covers the left ear. I have used it on a couple of jobs now, and I'm not getting as many burnt spots on the top of my head because I don't wear a hat when I'm generally welding. I just did a job out west where I was doing a lot of overhead work and was really happy I had this. So thanks again, Isaac. So if you haven't checked out Isaac's channel, go check him out at IC Weld.
right. Righto guys, we've completed the work we needed to do on these tubes. So they've been welded, they've been machined. I'm gonna give the customer a call now, let them know they're ready to be picked up. If you wanna see any more of the operation and the way these machines work, we're gonna put a link in the description to the customer's YouTube channel so you can see the machines in action and their function and features. Thanks for watching. How do we stand? Like this? Sure. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so these will end up being the backbone for, for... They'll end up being the backbone for their laser buckets. I've paused. <laughs> they'll end up being the... <clears throat> they will end up being a backbone, the main structure for a laser bucket. Shit. They'll end up being the backbone for their laser buckets. <laughs> Okay. I'm just going to make it work. Do it again. <laughs> right. The laser buckets our customer builds... Oh, fuck. What's the next bit? <laughs> <laughs> right, so the laser customer... Oh, the laser <laughs> yeah, Roger. <laughs> Where are you going with this? I don't know. Um, they... Oh, what me. happened to the laser precision? Yeah, I was getting to that. Oh. Right. Ready? Mm. Right, so these are a laser... Oh, fucking Jesus. Stop picking your skin. Right, ready? <laughs> <laughs> it fucking hurts. So the pieces of material, they are 12 and 3 quarter bananas in diameter with 11 and a half... Fuck. <laughs> so the pieces of material, they are... Uh, I'm not saying bananas, it fucks me up. <laughs> we can now put these in that and do the job. Fuck, I lost that. Oh. Wait, wait, how are you starting that? Oh, he can't help me. Oh, fuck, who cares? No, who gives a fuck? Oh, fuck, who gives a shit? <sighs> right, are we ready now? I'm ready, are you ready? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, all right. This looks so ugly, by the way, <laughs> compared, to the, compared to the Dorian. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> sit, sit. Oh, <laughs> little legs. Oh, Come homie. Come on, off you get. Come on. Hey. Is it good? Is it good? Is it good?
What's happening? You wanted a pineapple. What about your treat? What's this? What's that? <laughs> What's that? Oh, you're so silly. <laughs> Where'd he go? Go get him. Stop. Stay. 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 <laughs> oh, charge. Charge. Good boy. Ready? Wanna go? Go outside? Let's go. <laughs> 